Welcome back, everybody. My name is Gamma Trap, one word, and today we are covering stone. Now, this is part of a stone playlist. Each of these are in their own individual video, but if you want to get the most comprehensive view of how I go about making these stylized stone pieces, you might want to start from the beginning, but they are all separated in case there's one you're looking for in particular. I have a lot more stone tutorials planned, but I wanted to take this into small bite sized chunks. These four have been recorded, and I'm just finishing the editing on them all. To find the other ones, you can check the playlist or check the video description down below for links to each of these videos. And if there's something else you're looking for in particular, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's get started. All right, this is the second video in our stone series. This one's going to be a half buried uh, or buried sphere of, uh, of just stone. And this is gonna be a little more polished stone, so it's not gonna be like, like imagine trying to carve you know, a sphere out of stone. And this is for various other reasons, but the main point of this particular one is to help people understand just a little bit more about the color and the value of stone. And, and the easiest way I've found to do that is to handle basic shapes. And the first video covers a lot, a lot. I, I highly recommend watching the first video in the series first, the cube, because that covers uh, all the, the very serious like basics of of the colors and the values and how to render the cracks and the, the little textures in the stone uh, that I'm going to be doing here. So I'm just going to handle the shape and the overall lighting and explain a bit more of that. But I would again recommend you watch the cube video. Let's just jump into the circle idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a shape of our ellipses tool. And if, and if it's not that, you could just hold and get the ellipse tool. And this, usually these like circular selection things and stuff is usually that's in every program but if it's not you can just make a shape and then use that and it's what we're actually going to do right now just in case you don't have like a circular selection tool so we're going to find the middle point where you want so right now i've got this little dirt patch i'm going to put it on i'm going to hold down alt to keep it centered and then hold down shift to keep it perfect a perfect circle no matter where i drag this i'm going to keep about maybe about that big and we're not too worried about what this, what color this is, what color this looks like right now, because first we're going to rasterize this layer because it's a shape layer right now. We want to just run a rasterize real quick. And we're going to make a mask, which is this button down here. And it makes this little mask window. And we're going to paint black on this mask to quote unquote erase it. But if you paint white over that erase part, it comes back. So it's a non-destructive erasing. And we're going to just find where we want our stone to sit and how we want it to sit. Actually, I'm gonna, there we go. Make it a little, a little bigger, a little easier for y'all to see. I don't know why I'm zoomed out. Now what's cool about us starting at this phase is we can determine, you know, the weird grooves. And if you use your hand, this allows you to actually give it strange cut shapes. And even if you want, put on pressure there make it look like grass is already coming up by just kind of erasing areas where the grass is. Because if it's perfectly like, like if it's a perfect line, that, that doesn't really look like it fits in an environment anywhere, especially in a stylized environment. So imperfections is usually the way you want to go about it. And we're actually going to mess with this nice clean outline here pretty soon too. First things first. All right, now we're going to make a new layer, and we're going to make this a clipping mask by right-clicking it and selecting clipping mask. Now, in case you missed the cube tutorial, these are our colors we're dealing with here, from light to dark. It's a almost a perfect diagonal path. So we got our lightest, and then as we go further down, it just gets closer and closer from light to dark, but we, we make it a little more saturated the further down it goes. Now this is usually kind of backwards because usually the less light you have, the less saturated it typically is. But if you make it just straight, you know, straight down across the board, it gets kind of boring. And if, if it gets too dark and low saturation, it's essentially black like this. And it's really hard to put color in there without like using too many, you know, adjustment layers and, and, and little quote unquote cheats. So to start the, the process, we just like to make it a nice little kind of diagonal shot. So we have some vibrance and we have some low saturation. 
Let's grab one of our middle colors here. And these are all just kind of cool gray colors. We're just going to paint that over. And because it's a clipping mask, we can paint anywhere on the screen, but it'll only show up on the mask it's clipped to. We can actually merge these masks. And I'm going to control E to merge that. And we're going to apply this mask, meaning that everything that was masked out is is officially gone. It, it is completely disappeared. It's not kind of ever come back on site control Z. <laughs> But, you know, it, it removes everything. So now it's a nice, clean little, you know, half circle with some cut up grass and dirt areas beneath it. So now we're going to make a new clipping mask. And now we can start to work on the overall lighting. Now I've got some lighting in here set already for like future stuff. But this is this is how I imagine. And I just made this just to help y'all like understand <laughs> and to make things look a little more you know, pretty, maybe. But I just made this little light thing here to show you where my light source is coming from. It's going to be top left down over here and where your light source is is always very important. And now so the light source is coming from up here behind this stone. So the light source is coming up from up here towards us a bit. So we're going to grab some shadow and a soft brush. And I'm only going to be using the two round brushes here, basic round brushes. There's the hard round pressure opacity brush and the soft round pressure opacity brush. The pressure opacity just means the harder I press, the more, you know, the more paint, quote unquote, comes off on the brush. I'm gonna turn that off so it's a normal circle. If you have this turned on, you'll have these sharper edges, which is cool for like making grass and stuff, but I'm not making grass right now. So because we were using the clipping mask layer here, I'm gonna place this shadow down here because the light's coming from up here. The opposite of that is right over here. I'm just going to make a little circle. And you can see our little sphere here starting to take a little bit of shape. So now let's make it a little darker. A little darker. And then we can go the other direction. We get our lighter color. The thing a little, a little thinner. I'm going to brush the lighter color on towards our light source. So I'm going to put our light source back here just so you can see it. Remember our light source coming up here. So this edge needs to have more of our light source. So again, gently brushing right there. And we're going to have a little bit of bounce light, meaning we're going to take our brush a little smaller, still soft, still same color, and we're going to gently add a bit on this side to allow for the environment to have a little bit of a light on our subject here. If you want, you can also grab a, a green from like the, or, or a color from the environment and super gently putting that on the bottom, not in the shadow, but a little bit in the shadow, not too much. But this is just extra environment lighting. You don't really need it. It's just extra credit, make it a little extra juicy. You know, we always love a little extra credit here. And now I'm gonna add another layer and make this one a clipping mask as well just so that whatever we do to this layer, it won't interrupt, you know, the lighting layers beneath it. We can always have that because it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's a structure, it's got a sliding and it's not gonna change that much. We can, we can just keep that there. So our new layer is going to be our details kind of layer. Now we can have this sphere kept really, really like very, very well polished and very well cut if we want. Uh, or we can make it look like it was a little rougher, a little rougher chiseling, meaning that it's uh, instead of a perfect sphere, like a marble, instead it's more like a more like a more common rock with planes. So like it was chiseled in this shape. And you could do this by just grabbing, remember we're using the hard round pressure pasty brush, so it's a hard brush now. And you just grab a color, and I'm and on PC or on Photoshop, I should say, uh, Alt or Option will give you your eyedropper tool, and you grab a color, and you kind of paint in that spot. You know, it's kind of a small shape. It could be triangles, little semicircles, whatever you like. You know, and this adds sort of like grooves. Now, the thing to keep in mind is because this is a stylized piece, we don't want it to be boring. That's, that's, that's one of our, our basic rules. So having grooves come down like this and like this and then like this and then like this, you know, this, 
that will make it kind of boring because it's pre- it'd be predictable. You know, okay, because there's a groove there, then another one's going to be there, then another one's going to be there, and then another one's going to be there, you know. We don't want predictability. We want kind of, bit of a bit of randomness. So change the size of these grooves from time to time. Like, don't let them be the same size. And change the shape, change a little bit of the variety of, of all these, these grooves. You got to make it look like it was really, really carved in there by some, maybe, maybe not the most efficient stone cutters. Like, you know how hard it is? Like, when you think about it, you know how hard it would be to carve a perfect sphere? Like, like put yourself in those, in those stone cutters' shoes, you know? <laughs> Just like, wow, that'd be pretty tough. So one way we can kind of combat the whole monotony and boringness of the perfect little sphere is to add these little grooves here. And this adds a bit of texture to it. Change the sides a bit. And as you can tell, I'm just gonna just finish roughing up this real quick. I'll just speed through this real, real fast, real fast. You won't even, you won't even notice, okay? You won't, you aren't missing much. So I was actually, you might have seen me, I was actually about to add a, a big crack in this. Um, and I figured this actually be really useful to narrate so you're not like lost. So in the previous video, the cube, I, I showed how to make grooves, how to make cracks, and how they should work with the light and uh, the color and how to step with your values, like go from this to this, 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 you know, from lighter to darker. Uh, be sure to watch the cube video if you're too lost on this, if it didn't make too much sense to you. but. While you're making these little nice little cuts and grooves, it is cool. It is cool if you also add uh, grooves and like cuts and not just little tiny planes and, and roughed up edges like we've been doing. But I mean like grab the darkest color we got here. We might have to go darker, but I'm gonna make this look like it's got a big old gash in it. the weather beat down or something crashed into it or something. And like we said in the last video, we're just gonna vary the size of these cracks so it doesn't look too boring, too uniform, too predictable. And now because the light's coming from over here, down this way, even though it's a round surface, what we're gonna do is this edge over here is more quote unquote facing light than this edge down here. So we're just gonna lighten up this side of the crack just a little bit. Give a little extra attention, a little extra love. Now the far edges, as we talked about in the cube video, the edge opposite of the light source gets the lighting. So because lighting is over here, coming down this way, the edges over here of the cracks get the lighting. Now we're actually gonna add a little darker area down there. So we grab our darkest color and the edge closest to the light source is the darkest edge. So because the light source is on the left coming to the right, we're going to make the areas that are on the left of this crack be the darkest. I'm going to lighten this up a bit because the light does come from light to dark down here. So we're going to lighten this up actually just a little bit. We're just going to throw in some other, a little bit of 
little few dots and scratches of the lighter color just to prevent it from being boring. Because boring is the antithesis of what we're going for with our stylized rocks. It's the word of the day, antithesis. Sometimes it, it's, it's pretty good to feel smart sometimes, you know? Using big words, feeling smart, tend to go hand in hand, whether or not you actually are smart, it's a completely different topic. <laughs> I'm gonna fill in some of these holes here with just a little bit of the rock. Line that up to, to show that there might be different depths of the cracks. If they're very dark cracks, that means they're very deep, but if they're lighter cracks, usually means they're kind of shallow. More like grooves, really. Let's clean up. Let's clean up these lighter areas. That's not bad. It's not too shabby. Let's put some some real actual, some genuine and true, um, like stone cutting in here. Like it was meant to be there in a stylized fashion, of course. So we're gonna grab a dark color and let's have it like, maybe, maybe not that, maybe like, remember, sound effects, very important. Mm, not too bad. Now let's clean it up. And this gives us another chance to actually add a little, a little more randomness to the edges. So this straight line, very boring. So we want to try and make it a little more interesting by maybe adding a little extra, a little extra zing to the to the curve and to the curve. Remember to use the color around the crack to paint next to it. So otherwise, you'd have. So if we grab this, and we keep painting. It's gonna look out of place in a lot of spots. Now let's add some light to that by putting it on the opposite side of our light source. And I'll just make a straight line, you know, just have a, cut a few grooves in it, you know, have a few dots. Now, let's add a little bit extra detail. Let's have a little extra cuts and grooves. So we're just gonna grab a dark value. And we're gonna kind of cut random little shapes in here. Like I'm making this mirrored three, you could say. This is a little mirrored three shape. I'm gonna cut sharp into it on one side and then I'm gonna grab a bit of the color of the other side and gently push it back until it sort of blends into into the stone. I want some sharp detail in here, but we don't need all of it. So for example, we could, we could make it look like stone was being like, was created by some kind of magical forces. So it was, it was twisting. Maybe cutting some some twisting stones to make it look like it's doing this. That'd be cool. It's always good to have a little bit of story to your pieces, even if it's just practice stuff, because it'll get you more and more in the habit of like making, you know, stories, which is really cool. I'm gonna add a bit up here, because again, if we just have them all down here, that's too uniform. You know, we're not, we're, it's the exact opposite of what we're going for. We don't want predictability. We want a little crazy. We're actually going to join this kind of thing with this crack we already have here. Because that makes a little bit of sense. That's actually kind of cool. Look at us go. Yeah, I'm so proud of us. We're doing so cool. We're making such a cool piece. Nice little spherical stone, dude. Or lady. Yeah, it's a stone. It's what it's. Pick its pick its poison. Very cool. Now, to have a little extra love on this, what we're gonna do is right now the edges is a perfect little perfect perfect. I mean like it's it's perfection. A little circular edge. We can break that up. 
just to give a little extra believability. So you can cut grooves where our our edges would be if you if these you know things were were cut planed and like maybe maybe have it look a little more layered because that's cool. And then adding some just some some little flat parts that make it look more like the rough edges and rough planes that we cut in the very beginning. Because we've added grooves and planes to the outside of our piece, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our light color, we're gonna accentuate those. So because the light's coming from over here and coming around this, it's going to catch on this groove we just made. Just a bit, it's not gonna catch all the way around, you know. It's just, 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 just a touch. It's gonna catch all those little, little grooves that we've already just made there. And tops of everything where light can catch it. Maybe just a, just a little bit around. Adding rim light to everything is not very realistic, but it does follow quite neatly into the rule of cool. Now we're gonna grab our lightest color, and we're gonna give it a little bit of rim light, making sure to find the, the perfect spots to give a little extra. And can give a little bit to the edge of these grooves that we cut. Same with some of these planes too. Just, just on the edge here by the closest spot towards our light source. And we're gonna just hand out the light willy-nilly. I think it might be the first time I've ever said willy-nilly in a video. Okay, there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Now, uh, easy part, we're just gonna add another layer, clipping mask. So it can stay within the shape. We get a soft layer. And we're gonna do our overall lighting on like the second phase. So we're going to make this a multiply layer. And we're gonna grab one of our four here, probably that one, very gently. We're gonna place that on the bottom. Not, not too hard like that, but just a bit. And a little bit more on the shadowy area here. So obviously again, not like that, but just a little extra. And this will help cement in people's minds where the, uh, that it's, it's sitting in a 3D space, even though it's just a 2D illustration. And we're gonna make a, another one, clipping mask, overlay layer. Hopefully I don't go too fast, but I do go very slowly in um, the, the cube video. And we're just gonna add that in our, our, our well-lit spots. Just give a little extra, a little extra juice including a little bit, and we're gonna make our brush a little thin here, just a little bit for the rim light. Because remember, the rule of cool still applies. Nice. We're gonna light that area right there up a little bit more too. Cool. Very cool. And then now I'm just gonna speed up, and you know, the last, last is pretty much over, but I'm just gonna real quick, extra credit, you know me, extra credit. I'm just gonna add a little bit of love down here in the bottom area. I'll just speed that up though. Okay, so there we go. There's our little stylized spherical thing. Now, this is uh, obviously a little more rough than the perfectly polished kind of thing we did earlier. Uh, but just if you want to make a perfectly polished sphere for whatever reason, like it was made by the ancients and it was, you know, <laughs> some crazy thing in your in your story, just make sure to like don't rough up the edges. You don't have to. It's all this is optional. This is just making a stylized stone structure. So hope you found this useful, helpful, or entertaining. Uh, feel free to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, sub to see more of these tutorials. I'm making a whole lot more. Uh, if you were lost in any of this, feel free to look back whenever you'd like or watch the cube video, the number of the first of the stone videos uh, to help, because that breaks down into a lot of what we talk about, but just way more in depth. And now that we got the basic shapes out of the way, uh, we're probably gonna make like, 
actual boulders and actual rocks. So they're not like some weird cut shapes like a sphere or a cube that don't quite fit in like a typical rock fashion. So the next videos are going to be more, more rock-like, including like magical rocks and floating rocks and rocks covered in runes and, and vines and stuff like that. So uh, all these videos are already recorded. I'm just editing them and, and editing, editing them. Yeah, there we go. I'm just editing, editing. Oh my God. You know what? Never mind. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever loving out of you for supporting the ever loving out of me. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.